good evening, Mother Zambia. Thank you so much for your time to join us on yet another exciting edition of the Oxygen of Democracy. Today, the 25th <coughs> in the month of August 2014. We are glad, as usual, that you could find this space to join us on this program because the, you are the reason why we always bring this uh, program. And I keep on emphasizing on each and every program that you are the reason why we bring this uh, program because because of you and us and everybody out there that will make this country go forward, positive or negative. You all have the keys to do that. All right, today we are looking at the future of the movement for multi-party democracy. The future of the movement for multi-party democracy and who is best or suitably qualified to discuss this issue. If it's not the president or for the former ruling party, Dr. Pastor Nevis Mumba. Mr. President, good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening, Colin, and uh, to the viewers, uh, I look forward to an intelligent and engaging debate. Thank you so much for inviting me. You are sure of that, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. I must say that we are glad that uh, you, you made it, really. Well, it's a busy time. Uh, I think that uh, every politi uh, politician in the country now is busy. Uh, we have an uh, unprecedented number of by-elections, you know, 31 uh, in a space of uh, 45 days. I mean, that has never happened since independence. So obviously, none of us is staying in Lusaka. We are all out there uh, putting in our very best. Mm. But I'm Talk glad that you invited me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. And talking of by-elections, <coughs> it, uh, it sends us to, to the Mangango and other ward elections which were taking place countrywide. Your impression of uh, these elections? Firstly, allow me to uh, start by saying that, um, uh, of course, when we heard the results, or personally heard the results of the Mangango especially, mm. um, I was deeply disappointed. Uh, I was uh, very angry, at the point of being angry, uh, when I got the results, for many reasons. Firstly, I, I thought that, um, uh, of course, every loss is painful, whether it's a football game. Mm. Uh, even when you thought that you're mm. fighting against uh, somebody who <coughs> was stronger than you, uh, but when the whistle is blown and they say you have lost, it's, it's painful. Uh, it's the same in soccer, it's the same in boxing, it's the same in any game. So it is in politics as well. And anybody who says that uh, when a loss comes, they don't care, they're lying. Mm. Um, obviously, we had our own reasons to believe. After my, uh, uh, my assessment of the situation, we had sent a team ahead of time to Mangango to assess the situation. What we found on the ground was basically that our structures were highly compromised. You must understand that um, we have a very peculiar situation as MMD, mm -hmm. that uh, some of our members of parliament uh, were grafted into the patriotic front as mm -hmm. deputy ministers. That in itself created an anomaly that uh, the structures over which they preside in, that, in those constituencies um, sometimes are confused. They don't know whether they're PF structures or they're MMD structures because um, the MP who is now deputy minister uh, fraternizes the, 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 the constituency and uh, sometimes poisons uh, our members, uh, thereby uh, creating uh, a crisis for the party in terms of effectiveness. And that was the situation in Mangango. Uh, Honorable Chiseke had accepted a job from the Patriotic Front mm. as a deputy minister. And because of that, our structures were highly compromised to the degree that by the time we were having the election, we had to just find a way to reconstitute that constituency. And everywhere, most of the places where we have had uh, MMD members of parliament, who are deputy ministers. We have faced the same tragedy in Katuba, mm. where we lost badly. Mm. It, the situation was basically the same. Uh, that uh, minister there, uh, the late Honorable Chikusu, may so rest in peace, uh, was working for the MMD government. Our structures were always complaining that, you know, we don't know how to handle uh, this phenomenon of having a PF minister who is an MMD member of parliament. Mm. Uh, we performed badly. You look at uh, Luangwa, where we had uh, Honorable Ngoma, as our member of parliament, but a um, uh, deputy minister in uh, the PF government. The performance there as well was terrible uh, because the structures were, of course, compromised very highly. Uh, we go to Mpongwe, where we also performed um, relatively badly. Um, the situation was basically the same, or a little bit different. We had Honorable Namulambe, 
who had uh, moved to the Patriotic Front and uh, moved with some of our structures and we had to go and rebuild. And that is the price we've had to pay uh, in the reorganization and uh, in the rebuilding of our political party. Mm. And uh, although painful, although I'm sad uh, because that happened, we really did not expect that we're going to win that election mm. purely on the basis of the state of our structures there. Mm. But obviously, uh, out of that election, we decided still to participate. And out of that election, we've made some resolves, uh, some resolve and decision mm. as to how we're going to move forward. Mm. And how are you going to move forward? Well, basically, uh, our main responsibility now uh, is um, I did have a press conference on the 21st of this month in which I directed our National Secretary, uh, Mr. Mohabi Lungu, to, to do the radical stuff. The radical stuff means that let's not pull, pull, you know, uh, pull back. Let us move forward and do what we must do, and that is to fix the political party, to fix the structures without being afraid of anybody. Uh, because if we are, we are the ones to lose. Mm -hmm. So we have decided to start from scratch by reorganizing the, the party from the grassroots all the way uh, to the top. And this is going to involve uh, the authority that has been given to the National Secretary, mm -hmm. not only to start the reorganization of the political party, but also uh, to instill high levels of discipline in the party, without which we cannot perform at all. In other words, um, we believe that um, uh, any structure that is moribund, it's not operating, uh, it's not producing fruit, it's not contributing to mm -hmm. uh, bringing life to the party, the National Secretary has been given the mandate to dissolve such structures and put in place new ones. And uh, those that would like to continue to dare us as, as, as a party and as leadership of the party, uh, the National Secretary again has the mandate mm -hmm. to make sure that those individuals that continue to bite in the integrity and the process of, re, uh, uh, of rebuilding our party, that he acts swiftly in uh, meeting out disciplinary action. Mm. And so we think that we need to get a hold of our party, mm. accept that we lost the election in 2011, accept that, you know, uh, as a result of that, we need to do some radical things. Mm. And that is to get the party back on track so that um, as we face the, the coming con uh, contests, we are going to have an uh, equitable chance mm. uh, to make sure that we win those elections. Mm. You've attributed the loss in Mangango due to compromise the structures. But in as you try to reorganize the party, there are people like Keith Mukata, who is still your MP, but serving as a deputy minister under the, the Patriotic Front government. But how are you going to win this battle? Well, firstly, uh, I have to be very, very clear that in my saying that the structures were compromised, uh, an electoral contest does not only involve uh, a loss of an electoral contest, does not only involve one particular aspect. I have to be the first one to take my share of responsibility as president. I've always done that. Mm. The day I won the presidency of MMD mm. in Mulongushi Conference Center in my inaugural speech, mm. I took responsibility for the sins of MMD, mm. which were committed when I was not even there. It's a moral responsibility I have. But in Mangangu, I will take my share of responsibility. Just like my colleagues, for instance, um, in the party, are going to take responsibility as well, share the responsibility. Because it's only through this shared responsibility that we can together put our heads, or we can put our heads together to ensure that the next contest mm. is going to be a victorious contest. Mm. Um, this election was in, in Western Province. Uh, we have several members of parliament in Western Province. Mm. Um, some of them didn't even go to that by-election they also have to take a share of that responsibility because of the nature of MMD. When you look at Kafue, or, or rather you look at um, Keith that you have mentioned, we do not yet have a by-election there. Mm. Uh, but we can assume that uh, the structures there are not, for instance, as strong as the structures in... And that's why I asked that question, yeah. because in case such a thing happened, mm -hmm. how are you dealing with that thing before it happens? Well, this is why during the press conference, I gave a directive that let us go back to the roots and grassroots and reorganize the party vigorously, which means that our party now is going to go into Keith Mukata's uh, constituency mm. and get down to our structures mm. and ensure that they're purely MMD. If there are any compromised people, we want them to, mm. to be, to be uh, given um, 
rest so that they don't continue to compromise our party. So this is a very vicious program. I am determined to do this, and it's going to cause a lot of friction with some people who like to uh, create a status quo of not wanting change. But under my watch as president, I think that it is very, very important that we do what needs to be done. And right now we need to use a surgical knife mm. to fix what is wrong. It's going to hurt, but that's the only way we're going to get healed. Mm. If we don't use a surgical knife on MMD, uh, then we are not being fair to ourselves, we are not being fair to democracy, we are not being fair to the Zambians who are crying as a result of what has happened to this country because of the patriotic front. Mm -hmm. So we will use a surgical knife. Um, the administration of the party is going to, to continue to meet out discipline to those who would like to destabilize this party in any way mm -hmm. because that is not going to be allowed at all mm -hmm. under my watch. Mm -hmm. We are going to make sure that MMD emerges as a, a disciplined political party, mm -hmm. a winning camp, and a winning team and use all these things we've gone through as a reason to believe that we can't go through all this just to lose. Mm -hmm. I believe we are going through all this because we're being prepared for victory ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would not be uh, subjected to all this. I don't want to center this um, debate or this interview on Mangango, but I'm sure a lot of issues came, came out arising from that. And really, you got over a hundred votes, you know. You held that seat, and everybody thought you were going to defend it. But you came out with only a handful of over a hundred votes. And you managed to win only one ward election in Masai on the Copper Belt, out of the 24, 25 by-elections mm -hmm. and the local government. Mm -hmm. Now, this has, has, <coughs> has to the people, they, they'll say that probably this is the end of MMD. Let them, I mean, just give up. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've already talked about how upset I was uh, when I heard the results. Contrary to that view, obviously the performance of the party is totally unacceptable in that regard. Uh, to say that we pack our bags is misreading politics and life as a whole. Um, I am not going to comment on the validity of those votes. Of those votes, this is Zambia, um, in which they can give you the votes they want. Uh, we've never had that before, uh, mm. ever since I became president. Mm. That kind of performance. Exactly. Um, I've given you some of the reasons. Um, you must understand that, like football, like any cont uh, contest, you lose some, and some of them you lose badly. It's how you handle that very bad loss. I'll give you an example. When you look at uh, the Patriotic Front, mm. how we treated them in Mukaika, it's a party in government with helicopters, with fixed-wing planes, with drums of cash, dozens of vehicles on the road. They had everything. They were cashed to the teeth. But when the results were read, we beat them 9,000 to 1,000. For a ruling party, that is as good as getting 100 votes. But they kept a brave face because this is a fight. You are only going to prove you are a champion by how you get up from the canvas. The good thing is that in boxing, when you're knocked down and you get up, you are more dangerous than before you were knocked down. And you saw the PF kept a strong face, kept fighting, kept fighting, and they got a big win in Mangango. So this thing is not the loss you experience today. It's a fact that you look at all the issues that could have caused that loss mm. and learn from it and make a determination that never again, never again, are we going to allow that thing to happen. Now, that's number one. Number mm. two, you must understand that from the moment MMD lost power, I took, up, I took a party that had just lost power. And the party had mixed feelings. People were disappointed. Some of them angry. Some of them totally disillusioned. Some of them even confused at the loss. And at that time, there was need for some pastoral guidance. Mm. How do you harmonize all these feelings? How does the new president manage to reconcile all these feelings? Mm. The expectations that... The one who was one is a pastor, so the first thing we'll do is a miracle to just change everything and we'll be right back on top 
after having lost an election when we had all the money, we had all the material, we had everything, we had power behind us, but we lost to a political party that didn't even have chitengues, that didn't even have vehicles, that didn't have the vehicle, the, 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 the bicycles we had. So we came from that shock, and my job has been to be steady, be insulted but just be focused, be told that you are, you, you are, you are a failure but be focused, because I know what I'm dealing with. And all the honest Zambians know the challenge that Never Smumba and the executive committee of MMD and the entire leadership and the entire membership of MMD was fighting against. Mm. We were fighting against a real negative scenario. A scenario, Karen, which is as follows. When we lost the election, not only did we lose the election, PF came after us mm. big time. They determined to destroy MMD within a period of three months. That was their vision. Mm. Within three months, we must finish it. They poached our members of parliament and made the ministers to diminish the democratic balance in parliament and also to make us feel like we were gone. Not only did they do that, they followed all of us, slapping false accusations that we had stolen. The former president, up today, is going to the uh, court. Members uh, of form, the former cabinet members were also uh, being dragged to the task force. All of us were being dragged there. Our vehicles were grabbed from us in a moment. Bicycles were grabbed from us. In a, it's happening to one political party yeah. within a period of one month or two months. It was during that time when our president stepped down and we went without... Uh, an elected president mm. uh, for close to eight months and the bleeding was amazing because we were being hit from every angle from every angle not only was I arrested three times thrown into jail slapped with four cases mm. in court up to this day this week I'm in court um, all these things that have been done to us needed resolve and leadership of resolve mm. so the ordinary honest zambians know that what never smumba and his leadership have been fighting mm. is a real battle mm. and it needs <laughs> it needs the finger of god mm. determination focus against people rising up and remaining focused until we get where we should be and this is why i believe that MMD will get back where it should be because we have fought a good fight, a determined fight. Mm. It was hard. It has been challenging, but we are still in there. And the party is still standing, which is my responsibility as president to ensure that after it's all said and done, mm. MMD will still be standing, and it is standing today. And I look forward to the next set of elections because that's what the game is all about. Mm. You lose some, you're going to win some. And I'm not saying we're not going to lose any more elections. We'll continue to lose, but we'll also be winning elections. Mm. At the end of the day, the by-elections should not make us feel that they are the indicators of what 2016 is going to look like. Mm. Otherwise, Michael Sata, President Michael Sata will not be president today. Mm. They lost many by-elections, mm. some of them in a string. UPND has lost many elections, some of them on a string. And finally, on this matter, we have a very unique situation in MMD. MMD has some people that believe that they are ordained to find a way to disrupt the party. Mm. I think we'll be getting to that. Mm. And I think I've got a, a question related to that. So, mm. firstly, <clears throat> let me get the issue of still the party. Mm. What then is, is next for you as, as MMD? What are the future prospects? The future prospects are great. And do you believe you can still bounce back to power? Um, I want you to know that there's nothing right now that stands in our way to getting back into power. There are three major political parties in this country. The Patriotic Front, the MMD, and the UPND. And it's not because I'm president of MMD, but MMD today stands a better chance to get him back into power. Than the rest of other political parties? I believe so. Mm, let's hear the reasons. We are well positioned. We're well positioned. Number one, I think that how we have survived, this political party has demonstrated that it can survive an onslaught that very few political parties can survive. From 2011 to today, 
and myself as president, we have fought battles that very few political parties would fight and survive. It was meant, these battles were meant to decimate us, to finish us, to clear us, but we are still standing. Yes, we are going to come with some blood on our faces from all the punches and the blows, but a champion does not always have a clean face. A champion, when they raise his hand and say you are the winner, his face is all battered with bumps of that, but victory is coming. We've been hit from every angle. Mm. And I think the fact that we have survived mm. these fights gives me the understanding of how strong mm. MMD is, mm. how democratic our party is. We are, as I've said, a party with national character. No one can take that away from us. A national character means that when you look at the composition of our party, or also the pr former presidents of this party, they come, each one comes from a different region. We are the only party that has President Chiruba coming from Luapula, has President Levi Mwanawasa the late coming from Central Province, having uh, President Rupia Banda coming from Eastern Province, uh, this new president, myself, Nevas Mumba, coming from Uchinga Province. There's no other political party with that dimension to it. Therefore, Zambians, at the end of the day, will become more comfortable with this political party mm. for two reasons. Number one, it welcomes everybody. Everybody feels they can participate. They can also become president mm. at some point in this political party because yeah. we, we have demonstrated that. Two, I think that uh, a lot of Zambians believe that uh, when they look at the performance of the Patriotic Front and they look at the performance of the MMD, they are able to say, look, we were much, much better under MMD. It doesn't matter whether it was in the agricultural sector, it doesn't matter whether it was in the mining uh, sector, it doesn't matter whether in job creation, whether it was the investment from uh, uh, foreign investors or local investors, whether it was the strength of the kwacha, whether it was inflation, whether it was the reserves in the bank, everything was much better than it is now. Mm. But the PF would argue to say you are in power for 20 years, they've only been in power for less than three years. Which means you shall know them by their fruit. Um, it doesn't take, it takes less than three years to know that this woman cannot give birth. Uh, it doesn't take more than that. I mean, uh, three, by three years you're going to know that I have a problem here. My, my wife won't give me babies. Uh, and, and PF has demonstrated by the, the lack of plan and lack of strategy and lack of policy. Because all they need to tell us, if I were to ask you, Karen, today, what is the agricultural policy of PF? It will be impossible for you to explain it. Because they don't have one. If they do, it's, 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 it's all uh, patched up with MMD and what they maybe read and they try to do it. So that cannot function. So I think that the Zambians now are going to look at the performance of the Patriotic Front and compare it to the performance of MMD, even in the first three years of MMD. They don't have to come to the 17 years. They have to take the first three years of MMD and take this first three years of PF. Mm -hmm. We made tremendous headway as MMD. President Chuluwa promised when there were shortages of everything here, maybe you were too young, Kalan, at that time, but to get soap, you had to line up. To get cooking oil, you had to have a, some connections in ZCBC with the manager. Mm -hmm. To get anything, you had to line up. Chiluwa said, when I become president, these lines will finish. To buy sugar, to buy bread, it would, had to be through negotiation. You wake up at 5 in the morning, line up as ZCBC or OK here in Lusaka to buy those commodities. He said, I'll end that. To go to Chinsali, where I come from, from city bus station, from, uh, from, from, from the uh, bus station here in Lusaka, we, wa we were waiting for two, two weeks mm. to get on a bus to Chinsali. President Chiluba said, when I become president, no one will be lining up for buses. What happened when MMD won? Within three months, max four, five months, what happened? Buses now began to wait for people, not people waiting for buses. Mm. You go to mini buses, they are calling. There were no callers during those days of UNIP of saying, come on, um, because there were only a few buses. But now we remove taxes from buses, they came in duty-free. Businessmen began to, uh, to go into the transportation sector. Mm. That problem was solved. We opened up the market to other shops and businesses and dismantled parastatos that controlled the ZCBC uh, chains and brought in other shops and brought in competition. Now, 
we could buy sugar here or buy it in another shop. We have ShopRite. We have uh, all these shops that have come uh, from all over the world participating in our economy. Now you don't have to line up. That was MMD in the first three years. Mm. So mm. you can't say that no, they have only been there for three years, so they should be, they are going to be productive in the fifth or sixth year. Mm. No. What are the challenges you've seen under the ruling PF? I think, I think they did not believe they could win an election. I think when they won the election, MMD was shocked, Zambians were shocked, the PF was also shocked that they had won the election. And in that shock, they realized that every promise they made, Zambians wanted them attended to. And then they realized they were unattainable. So what they decided was just to lie or keep quiet. So we have seen Ubu Finomba Wawakwati, a type of leadership. Because you can't govern without telling lies in this government. Mm. So I think there are problems. Like right now, I, I need to make mention, MMD is very, very concerned about the nature of the government of the PF, the way it's been run, mm. especially in the person of Mr. Winter Kabimba. The question I have for him and for the PF, in what capacity is Mr. Winter Kabimba flying all over this country in, a gov in government choppers and air force planes, which we as MMD are calling he is abusing the air force? In what capacity? He's not a vice president. He's not a president. He's a minister of justice and the Secretary General of a political party, which is in government. Mm. Got, well, and, just I before mean, you I, stop me, this mm. is very important. You don't have it on your list, but mm. you have asked me to talk something, something about the PF. Mm. Uh, I think this is important for Zambians to realize that if we don't stop people like Mr. Kabimba from abusing national resources, they're making some of our policies very difficult. One of the policies of MMD, the New Hope MMD, is that when we get back into government, we don't want to go after former leaders uh, to, 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 uh, to implicate them in court cases. But in this regard, Mr. Kabimba is making himself very available for, for prison because we are going to ask him in what capacity was he flying around the country. I was vice president of this country. Between me and the late President Manawasa, even when I was going to the Copper Belt, if there was a flight on Zambia Airways or Zambian Airways, he never allowed me to use Air Force plane. He told me to get on a Zambia Airways plane or pro flight to go to Kitwe. Wherever there was a service, I flew on those planes. Where there was no service, like you are going to Chinsali, you are going to Mongu, then he would allow the vice president to use uh, Air Force planes. There is no cabinet minister who was using a plane. Now it's free for all. The question we have is that in what capacity is he using these planes to campaign? Is he the vice president? Is he the president? This must stop. Because if he does not stop, Mr. Kabimba will realize the wrath of the Zambian people. They're watching him now, but he will never get away from it. I thought it was important mm. for us to warn him ahead of time mm. that what he's doing is wrong and it is sending a wrong message to the Zambian people. In case you're just uh, joining us, you're watching the live broadcast of uh, the Ox Gene of Democracy on Prime Television, and we are looking at the future of the MMD. But hey, other matters are arising on this program, so we cannot do away with them. So we just have to accommodate even these other national issues which are arising out of this discussion, because we believe they're also important in shaping the future and the destiny of Mother Zambia. And my guest on the program is Dr. Nevas Momba, the president of the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, MMD. And then let's get back to matters of MMD. Uh, you, you started touching on it a little bit. Uh, we hear, according to speculation, that there are some people within the MMD who are being sponsored by unknown political parties to destabilize the party. Do you share the same views? Well, first of all, I, I think it is fair to say that uh, every political party has such people uh, that uh, nothing is right for them. Mm. Uh, their desire is either to ascend to power themselves or to serve the interest of opponents. Uh, in this case, uh, MMD is not an exception. Um, MMD is a force to reckon with. 
it's a it's it's a movement it's a huge party and no intelligent opponent will just sit and watch mmd mm. so for me i do understand the challenges of trying to destabilize mmd um i know that um they put in about uh one one billion uh quacha during that time when i just took over as president mm. Uh, to destabilize the party um, and then another 500 million uh, given in the hands of certain people to appear on radio stations television stations to talk about the party is dead the party is not going anywhere and those comments keep on cutting yeah because it's important for for opponents to keep saying that those are wishes that they pray for every day that may mmd die because it serves their interest mm. the good thing is they are not god secondly they, they their confessions can only make them feel better when they're or good when they're sleeping. The truth of the matter is that every political party has those people. You read the Bible, Colin. Mm. When the children of Israel mm. were moving from Egypt to the Promised Land, the Bible says it was a mixed crowd. There were people there who were sponsored by Egypt. They were told, go with them and be the source of discouragement. Tell them you think you are going to make it. You are going to die from hunger. Where is the water? You, this Moses said he was going to give you water. Where is the water? You, he said he was going to give you food. Where is the food? We are tired of all this manna. We want, those people are always there. And as a minister of the gospel, but also as a leader, that is why those things don't distract me. Because if people don't say that, then we are not going anywhere. Distractors will always be there. The point I've given to all our members of the National Executive Committee and all our membership across the country is not to be deterred. They, they should not look to the left or to the right. Let us be focused. If we remain focused, we're going to cross the Jordan. We're going to get on to the other side. We are not the only party with problems. Our problems are peculiar. But the problems of MPF are also peculiar. Mm. The problems of UPND are also peculiar. Each political party has got its own specific set of challenges. It's how we mount over those challenges. That's where leadership is demonstrated. And it is also true that when people say, no, uh, MMD has a lot of problems, Nevers has a lot of problems, I've always known that leadership is only identified in problems. If MM didn't have any problems, how are people going to know how much of a leader Nevers Mumba is? If the, everything was nice, everything is good, how are they going to know that Nevers Mumba is a truly good leader? It is through these challenges. How we mount over the waves. The waves come this way, they come this way, but we ride over the waves and keep going, keep going. And this is what MMD is doing. From wave to wave, we'll fall to the ground, we'll rise again. And really for me, I think that those people whose mission is to destabilize MMD, they cannot succeed. They will not succeed uh, because efforts and attempts have been made over the past two years to do exactly that. And they have lamentably failed. Mm. And they will continue to do it and they will fail again. Mm. And they will fail again because basically we have a vision. Mm. And that vision is to play the role for which MMD was formed to provide um, uh, the democratic norm, I mean, democratic model for this country, to ensure that we push mm -hmm. for uh, private enterprise so that Zambians can uh, uh, be enterprising within themselves and build the economy mm -hmm. on a private sector-driven economy. These are values, including the value we have added since I became president, which is that we demand for leadership of morality and integrity in the politics of our country. Mm -hmm. These three pillars are guiding us. Democracy, free enterprise economy, and morality and integrity of its leaders. These three together are going to give us what needs to be given in order for us to provide the necessary hope for the Zambian people. Mr. Mumba, I, I know as a political party you are determined to, to reach the top again. I, I'm talking about leadership. You want to get back to, to governance. But I'll tell you that one big blow which you've just received today, and I know you are not aware of it in terms of a grassroots politics. Your entire executive in Nangoma has just defected to the UPND. I just arrived from Nangoma this evening. I'm sure those clips will be seeing them tomorrow. Like I said, the politics 
are always moving and shifting. That can never deter us. I've already mentioned that we have had compromised structures in a lot of our areas. I have given an instruction to the, to the National Secretary to start remobilization. This is a party that knew how to be in government. The, we are now learning to be in opposition. The aspirations that we had when we were in government, the benefits that the membership had when we were in government, they are not there anymore. Mm. Doesn't that pose a challenge to you? It does. The entire e e executive. No, you, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't back that uh, because we don't have that information, even if it is true. Even if it was, I mean, these things we have heard many times. The entire leadership in Wapula has defected to PF. The entire, that is the politics of today, which we do not participate well, in. Well, the only problem is that I arrived very late, so I failed to prepare those clips. Mm -hmm. But I promise you that tomorrow, I'm sure when we'll be glued to our main news, we'll be watching those clips, I promise you, because I was there and I attended that, in, they introduced themselves, they were led by the uh, constituency secretary, Mr. Himwinde. Mm -hmm. What is going to happen through the national secretary's work is that if that has happened, and you say that it has happened, through our organization, those structures are going to be filled in within weeks. So to us, that is not a problem. If those people cannot handle being uh, in MMD because the things they used to have before are no longer there, then I think that uh, we are going to have to make sure we do what we do all the time, fill up, the, uh, fill up those spaces and get new blood in there. Probably that's what MMD needs. Mm. We need new blood in a lot of our structures, mm. people with energy to be able to move the party forward. Mm. So for me, I have never been intimidated um, with people wanting to move from one area to the other. We do not have the dynamics of what caused that. We don't have the story of who influenced them, what they have been promised. Mm -hmm. We don't have that information. So to make a statement to say, oh, poor, you know, party. No, absolutely. MMD is a big party. It's a big party. You're always going to have people moving this way and moving this way. What we are doing now, we are reorganizing the party. Uh, tightening up our operation and I believe that we are going to end up with a team, a winning team and when people leave, people have left all the time, uh, not from MMD but from all political parties mm -hmm. to go to other political parties mm -hmm. but those political parties have not stopped so if they have moved within a few weeks, they are going to be replaced we are going to have new people in those structures mm -hmm. This program is not about <coughs> name calling or pointing fingers at this one or that one I think this is a national program. But bringing you to the MMD internal wrangles, I'll point out Miss Leah because she's been coming up more prominently in terms of attacking the party. Very recently, I think she's been issuing statements to say the MMD is dead. How are you dealing with her? Because these other people, according to what you've said, trying to bring the party down. You know, how are you dealing with people like Honorable Leah in this case? I think... Um I can say two things on that matter. Firstly, I think that um, in terms of uh, Honorable Dora, uh, it is not my place really to start to go back and forth with uh, Honorable Dora. Mm. I've worked very well with her before. Dora uh, supported my presidency to the hilt and gave very valid reasons why she did that. Mm. And so I am grateful she chose to support me of all the presidential candidates. So I would rather remain with that good that she did mm -hmm. than the things that she could be saying at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no re reason to, to know why she's saying what she's saying. And so I cannot comment. That's her opinion. And in MMD, we are never disturbed by opinions, except to say that um, the national secretary, when he announced the decision to remove uh, those members of parliament from, I mean, those uh, members of NEC from their positions. He did mention categorically that we are going to watch all this to make sure that they seek reconciliation with the party. Uh, if there is no reconciliation with the party, mm -hmm. the National Secretary reserves the right without any recourse to the National Executive Committee to take any action that will be befitting to ensure that uh, our party continues to operate in its integrity and continues to be what it's supposed to be. So I think that is in the hands of the National Secretary uh, to make a decision on those people who continue at a time when we're going to buy elections to make a statement uh, like that. But I think for me it is uh, very, very cardinal that I keep the good picture of the 
Dora that I know, Honorable Dora that I know, and like to say whatever she's saying now is her own opinion, and I, I, I do not want to push it beyond that. Mm. We will not go beyond that. I think I just wanted your comment over that because such comments are the ones really which are bringing discourse among Zambians to say why the part all of a sudden keep on fighting among each other instead of uniting, instead of them being united at this particular point. But this is when they are even more divided. But we shall leave that matter for now. Mm -hmm. I think let's get to other important issues of national uh, uh, importance. And um, very soon, as you can hear, our phones are already ringing because you are supposed to give an opportunity also to the viewers to start um, participating on this uh, program. But let's touch on the constitution issue uh, briefly, and then we, we can allow uh, the viewers to, 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 to participate. Your quick view over the constitution, which the PF seems reluctant to, 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 to deliver to the Zambian people. Uh, Cullen, it's very unfortunate that uh, the PF has missed a great opportunity uh, to prove themselves to the Zambian people that they mean what they say. Uh, one of the major reasons why the Zambians voted for the PF was that the Zambians liked the promises that the PF was making, uh, that they were going to give us the constitution within a record period of 90 days. Um, this is three years later. Uh, the least that Zambians expect from the PF is to say, fellow countrymen, we are sorry that we have not been able to live up to our, to our promise. Forgive us. They have not done that. Somebody called me the other day saying, oh, uh, Mr. President, we, you must be very discouraged as the Grand Coalition because you have failed to force the PF to give us the Constitution. Mm. We are not the ones who should be sorry. It's the PF that should be sorry. The Grand Coalition got together to tell the government that, listen, this is a promise you made. you got to make it available before the next election. And PF has refused, for whatever reason. The ones who are going to make a verdict, the ones who are going to make a verdict on this matter, they are going to be the people of this country who were lied to, the ones who feel cheated. And the best time the people of this country demonstrate that is when they go behind that little curtain in the voting booth. The Zambian people do not like to be cheated. They don't like to be taken for granted. They don't like to be abused. And they feel cheated and abused and almost robbed of their integrity to trust. And so I think that it would, the only remedy for PF is to do a miraculous turnaround and give the constitution to the Zambian people. Short of that, I don't see how the Zambians will forgive PF. I don't. Zambia is a Christian nation, but Zambians, as much as they forgive, they, they hate lying, they hate liars, and they are going to make the verdict behind the curtains. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> this time around, let's allow some uh, viewers also to take part via calling. Of course, uh, the numbers are right on your screen. I'm sure you are able to see them uh, very clearly, but if you are unable to see them clearly, it's 0966-005686, 0966-005686. I know the 0951 is very clear, so it's only people have challenges uh, getting, uh, noting the, the other line. So let's have some, uh, some calls, then we'll be getting to the discussion as we go on. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, you are through the program, sir. Please kindly speak up. Hello. You are through the program. Speak up your name and where you are calling us from. Hello. You are okay. Please go ahead. Your name and where you are calling us from. We lost you, but we were getting you loud and clear. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. You are through the program, sir. Your name? Hello? Okay. All right. Uh, let, let's try again. Good evening. Good evening, thank you. Your name and where you are calling us from? Yes, sir. Can you speak up, please? Okay, well, you can go ahead. We can now get you, sir. Yes, Mr. Blazy, then you are a pastor. I'm not 
a politician. You see, the MMP starts to deliver, so better give the CF a chance to deliver. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's get some more views. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, sir. Hello. Hello. You are through the program, sir. Your name and where you are calling us from? My name is Quincy. I'm calling you from Kenyama. Yes, sir. I want to ask Mr. President. Yes, good evening. Good evening, sir. So, yes. what do you think of the people who just left and joined the um, what is it? I think like they joined the uh, UPND. Mm. Yeah, okay, we'll wait a bit tomorrow as we said, but are you not worried of us? Mm. Are you not checked? You know what? Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Let's get some more views, then we'll get back to the discussion. Good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hello? Hello, you are through the program. Good evening. <laughs> you are through the program, side. Kindly reduce the volume on your TV set. Then you can go ahead. You are through the program, sir. Your name? Yeah. Hello? We are getting you, please. Go ahead. Okay. I think let's, let's, let's respond to these to, to the responses if we do have any, though we had a challenge getting their names. No, um, <clears throat> I don't think that I need to make a comment on, on the first one. He said you're a pastor, not a politician. I think we have dealt with this issue exactly. yeah. uh, you know, for many times. Yeah. Uh, the, the, there's nothing that stops a pastor from providing leadership mm -hmm. at national level. I was vice president of this country, and uh, I found out that there's great need in this country uh, for people of morality and integrity and people uh, with a godly background to preside over the affairs of God's people. So I think those people who say a Christian leader or a Christian cannot get involved in politics, indirectly they're saying it's better for those who don't believe in God to lead the people. They are the ones who qualify. It's a very, very diabolical way of looking at, at life. I do not think that's what uh, he's trying to say. So I cannot say much about that. The second question about those who could have joined the uh, UPND, which are yet to prove, um, I, I think every leader you know, gets concerned mm. when anybody moves from his party to another party. I've been a church pastor, and any time I lost one person from my church and joined another church, I felt it. But people live for various reasons. And as a leader, you've got to live above that. Find out what is it that has made that person live. Can it be fixed? so that others don't use the same reason. Mm. And basically for us, um, anybody who leaves uh, and those who come, we, we interview some of them to find out why have you come to MMD? Mm. Well, because that party is ABCD. Exactly. And we we'll tell them that, look, you're welcome, uh, but this is not a perfect party either. So you're going to find problems here as well, but you have to learn to stay with it, mm. stick with it, mm. suffer with the party, both in government just like you enjoyed it when it was in government, now in opposition, suffer with the party and contribute to making your constituency effective, to making your ward effective, to making your branch effective. Because you can't say, I want the president to come from Lusaka to come and, and organize the ward. Mm. Uh, so if the ward is not organized, then it's the president's fault. No, you have to make sure that at your level, you give your party the best shot. And as we go all the way up, each one of us plays our role. There's no individual pastor or a president or pastor who can do the work alone in a church mm. or in a political party. It's a corporate job because okay. MMD is an institution. All right. Thank you so much. Let's accommodate uh, some more callers. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. Uh, somebody's live, but um, I I'm sure they're trying to construct sentences. <laughs> Strike. No, Good evening. Oh, my. Mm. You missed that. Hello. Good evening. Okay. All right. Uh, let, let me drive you to, 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 to the other issue 
of uh, the president. Though I wanted to bring this one at the end of uh, uh, at the end of the program, but the president has been missing in public um, eye for quite some time. You being an opposition uh, leader, your view and your take on this uh, discussion. And so many people have wondered why the president would go mute on uh, the citizens. Obviously, all of us are concerned, not just opposition political parties, but all Zambians. Um, it's a tradition of this country to want to know uh, the whereabouts of the president. Mm. And um, what is happening has never happened in our history before. And so I, I have constrained myself mm. from making a comment on this matter because I don't know against what I'm making this comment. I think it is in the interest of the nation that the government spokesperson says something because I don't want to give a scathing attack on the president. What if he's sick and he's very sick? I'm not here to be a sadist trying oh, to sorry, beat him Sorry, not to cut you short, but the, the government has indicated that he's still very fit and working in his office. I, I think that... Um, you see, the, the, the problem that Zambians have right now with uh, the PF is that um, we were told within 90 days certain things were going to happen. And it never happened. And so the statements that Mr. Kabimba makes, for instance, or the spokesperson for government makes, very few Zambians believe those things. Uh, I think what's in the heart of Zambians is that they genuinely want to know the condition of the president, not in a bad way. They really want somebody from the team to tell the Zambians the situation with the president. That's all they are crying for. And they don't, a lot of them don't want to be ugly, like myself. I really don't want to be ugly to the president. If he's not well, I'll be the first person to go there and pray for him. That's really the way I am. But they are not helping us at all by being silent. Um, and I think the Zambians are yearning to get the condition of the president. I can only advise government. We've been there before ourselves as MMD, when President Manawasa was not well. We didn't do certain things right. But there's something we did. We announced that President, president uh, Manawasa was not well. That we announced. What we didn't talk about was how unwell he was. Um, I remember that at one point we were making comments like he's, he's jogging in London. Um, but Zambians are not children. Um, they, they have got family members everywhere. They've got family members at State House. They've got family members amongst the police. They've got family members at, among security. They've got family members everywhere. So you really can't hide that. And my appeal from my heart is, you know, someone in government in a, in a good spirit needs to tell the Zambian people. They owe it to the Zambian people to explain what is happening. There is no malice here. If there was malice from the opposition or from MMD, you have, you'd have seen it by now. Would have been using this issue to really try to make political mileage. But personally, I have refused to use this situation to make political mileage. The onus is on government to inform the Zambian people of the state of the president. It's only after that, when we know what's going on, that we can make an intelligent statement that we can release. Because you see, to make a statement in the absence of adequate information is not good leadership. And whatever statement I'll make now may be inadequately made because I may not have adequate information in handling this matter. So this is why I've constrained myself from talking about this matter. Can Zambians be stopped from questioning the whereabouts of the president, the health of the president at any level? It's not possible. It's not possible. Uh, and I think that's where the difficulty is. Zambians are a free people. They have always debated their situations. I, there's no way the Zambians are going to be muted that they can't talk about it. They'll continue to talk about it. It's for that reason, precisely for that reason, that they need to start at this time to inform the Zambian people what the situation is. And this does not mean they are not being good politicians by telling Zambians that the president uh, needs rest or the president is not well. Or the pre Whatever situation. I have said this before. I've been a pastor for 30 years. Everyone gets sick. We are 
mortal beings, you can who get sick and pray you get well. There's nothing spooky and spiritual about it. Mm -hmm. If you're a president, you get sick. If you're a secretary to cabinet, you get sick. If you're a vice president, you get sick. We are human beings. It's that humanity. It's that humanity that we must bring to the fore. And as we bring it to the fore, people feel for us. They pray for us. They identify with us. Oh, can you see president of Navantu? You understand? There is that feeling. And I think that we are missing out on all that because somebody in government is saying we'll keep this information to ourselves. But I think that this will be unsustainable. Mm. Let, let, let's give it a try again <clears throat> with uh, the cause if we do have any. All right. I'm being told that uh, <clears throat> we still have a challenge with uh, our lines. Technology can fail us at the end of the day. Anytime. But I'm, but I'm yeah. wondering really why government, either the PF, UN government, you've just alerted to the Zambian people that you could lie to the Zambian people that the president is, jog is, is, is jogging in, in London when he was ill. But why lie to the Zambian people? Why lie to the people that employed you? Well, I, I think that um, one of our policies as MMD New Hope, and when I talk about New Hope, it's, you know, President Chuluba's uh, MMD was new, uh, was new culture. President Mwanawasa's was New Deal. Uh, President um, uh, Rupia Banda was continuity with change. Uh, the MMD under my leadership is New Hope MMD. Mm. Uh, I think that um, we have preached that the answer to Zambian politics is not just change of government. It's change of politics. Mm. Morality, integrity must come back to politics. Mm. You can have a very educated president, a very well-to-do president, but if he lacks morality and integrity, the country will go down because the country is built on character mm. of leadership. It's not on the welfare or personal welfare of a president or a leader. And therefore, our offer to the Zambian people, moving mm. forward, is that we should never belittle the issue of the character of those people we wish to put in power. Mm. Because if your character is good, Karen, uh, it means that when you are asked a question on this program, mm. you will not tell the nation a lie because your conscience will not allow you. I don't even know how people tell those lies and go to bed and sleep mm. because we have a conscience. Could it be that Zambians have allowed it? To be cheated and allow it to go? I think we have. I think we have. We have not made the demands that need to be made on our leaders. Because really, if a leader in the United States, it's, you know, in the United States of America as a leader and you lie, mm. and it's found out it's a lie, you are gone. There's no middle way of negotiate. You are gone because nobody in those de in developed countries want to keep in power or in government a character who has no character to talk about. Because leadership is not because you went to school. Leadership is not because you drive a Mercedes Benz. Leadership is not because you know how to manipulate elections and win. Leadership is not to know how to say we had more votes than the other. Leadership is the ability to be just, to be honest, to be truthful, to love your neighbor, to feel for the poor, to feel for the handicapped, to feel for the disadvantaged, and use the governmental power to leverage those who don't have a voice for themselves. Mm. That is leadership. But today in Africa, whosoever has more guns wins the election. Whosoever has more money wins the elections. Whosoever lies the most wins the election. Until we depart from those politics, Zambia will keep going round and round without making progress. And therefore, I think where we are today, PF must be forced by the Zambian people to tell us the truth. They must be forced. It's our right to know the truth. The truth about? Everything. <laughs> Everything. Mm. The truth about the questions we are asking. Mm. Mm. We are asking many questions. But the minimum now has gone up three times from the MMD, MMD time. You promised us fertilizer will be cheap. It has gone up double 
from 50 to 100. You promised us that fuel would be cheaper and from Lusaka to Livingston will be paying less. We are paying almost double on the buses. How? You said that when you come into government, all the retired people are going to be paid. Who? They are not being paid. We are living in a time when workers in the railways would stay for more than eight to ten months without getting paid. How do they look after their families? What happens to them? Where is the heart for those in leadership? Why don't they run as quickly as they run to buy elections? Mm. To solve those problems of the suffering Zambians who have families and they're not being paid. This morality, this character issue is extremely important that if we don't regard it, when they go to cabinet, mm. instead of saying, let's make sure those who have not been paid are paid, they'll be saying we need new Pajeros for us because, you know, these Pajeros are two, old, two years old. We need new ones because the morality of the leaders is compromised. And that is why the uh, New Hope MMD, our goal is to ensure that morality becomes an issue in the leadership of our country. And Zambia will not change, fellow countrymen. It does not matter how many times you change government. If we are going to continue to entrust power in the hands of people who themselves have no character, truth, honesty, love for people, Zambia will still not move forward. Mm. I, I think the issue here is not with the Zambian people. It's, it's hard for us Zambians uh, really to, to tell who's truthful and who's not because you all come with the sweet voices, you know, when you're trying to ask for votes from us as Zambians. We give you chances at the end of the day, this is what we get in return. So I don't know how Zambians now at the end of the day are going to believe who is more truthful, who is more, uh, you know, who's going to deliver. We are, we are not promises. children, Karan. We are not children. We are not children. Zambian people are very mature people. Mm -hmm. Zambian people are able to tell you today it's going to rain uh, just by looking at the sky. Um, today it will be very hot. That's even before the sun rises. How do we know those things? Because we can tell. I've already used the Bemba proverb, which I don't want to keep repeating. Mm. Which means you shall know them by their fruit. I can tell you this. When President Sata was in opposition for 10 years, when he was voted in, Zambians exactly knew who he was. They knew the president. They voted for him with those qualities that they thought he had. Zambians know never smumba. Don't don't, don't don't lie about it. Zambians, it's not what you read in the newspapers. It's not what my opponents say about me. Zambians who have seen Nevers in public life for 28 years, have been in Zambia's public life for 28 years, they know Nevers Mumba. When it really comes down to it, they will revert to the Nevers they know, not the Nevers that people talk about in the newspapers. If you're given an opportunity to govern this country again, what, what are the major issues you would want to correct? Firstly, I think that uh, we have gone the wrong way in terms of just the culture of democracy in the country. Innovation for economic growth, innovation for social change, only happens if people are a free people. A free people are an innovative people. When you're free to think, you can make a jet that will go into space. The reason why Americans are making progress, America is a free country. PF came and took away the freedoms, the liberties of expressing ourselves. For instance, outside a by-election, I cannot go and hold a rally in Kitwe. Mm. Mr. President, hold your thought. Let's try and see if technology <laughs> will agree this time. We'll be on our side this time. <laughs> yeah. uh, good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. You are through the program, sir. Hello? Hello, good evening. I think they can't hear us. No, somebody is Owen, but good evening. Well, somebody is on the line, but um, they can't communicate to us. Good evening. Hello? Hello, good evening. 
Director, uh, let's try another line. I think uh, somebody is still busy watching the program. Yeah. So let's try to get another line, if possible. Good evening. Hello? Hello, good evening. Is that your name? Uh, this is Bandak. calling you from Kamala. Yes, Mr. Banda. Yeah, I just want to ask you the honorable member, the president. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, what strategies are you going to bring when you come back to the office? Mm. And uh, which strategy, which, which things are you... Uh, I think the message has been gotten, so I'm sure you'll be responding to that. But let's try to get some more calls. If we have any need. Good evening. Reduce the volume on your TV set, please. Hello, sir. Can you speak up and reduce the volume on your TV set? Uh, good evening, Mr. Vice President, uh, Mr. Good evening, sir. Uh, my question is very simple. Your name, sir? Your name? Uh, Siren. Who? Siren. Okay, go ahead, go sir. Ahead. Go ahead. Yes, my question is, uh, what uh, implementation are you going to implement if we were to vote for you? Because uh, only dog can go back to voting. Because the reason why, uh, as Zambians, we are mature, yes, sir. We are not, we, we are not uh, kids. We know what is happening in the system. We know the whole system that is used. And we know what is happening. It's not the same type of use whereby you go and they buy them and then you throw them or vote for us and they vote for you know, this time. We are living the 21st century whereby everyone is updated with the society. And we are tired of living in this old system. You know, the people are out there and they are suffering. And they, you people, when you go in government, you promise to provide, but you fail to deliver. Mm. What they assure us, we can vote for you. Mm. And I'm mean, looking at the, all the people on this thing for granted. I don't see any person mm. who is uh, worth it. I just, me personally speaking, I don't see somebody who is worth it to find as a president for the next election. Because we don't have people who are leaders who have that hard for the people. Yes, we have, we have got people, yes. On the mouth, speak up, vote for them. They forget people as I look at our nation. Our nation is sorry. Sorry, sir, but uh, uh, we can hardly hear you. Uh, I think the line is quite bad. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've gotten. Um, uh, of the it's basically the same as exactly the first yeah, one. Yeah, so yeah. let's accommodate another call and be brief, please. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Okay. 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 I, I think let's respond to this. what strategies will you bring if voted into office? I think basically they're just one and the same. And according to this man, though we didn't get his name from Kamala South, mm -hmm. what he's saying is, I don't know whether to use this word, but I think let me borrow what he said. I know it's, it's unfriendly. Mm -hmm. Only a dog can go to its vomit. Um, in terms of democracy, before I answer that question, uh, democracy is not about vomiting forever. It's very different from vomit. A democracy is when a political party goes a certain path that the citizens are not happy about. They will abandon that party for that election in the hope that that party is going to rethink and review its policies and correct the wrongs. That the next contest, they are going to give us answers as to how they have corrected the things that offended the citizens. That is why when you look at the United States, it has, all, it has actually become a two-party country. Mm. Uh, it's either the Democrats there in government, mm. and when the Democrats become very puffed up, thinking that they've got all the answers, um, then the, the, the American people vote them out of office. Mm. And then uh, the Republicans come in. Mm. And then when the Republicans also get so puffed up, they change them and get the Democrats back. So. This issue of saying that MMD has already played its part, it, it's, it's in the minds of people. MMD is an institution. It was founded on, on real um, issues and policies, which I've already alluded to. It's the party that espouses democratic values, which are extremely significant to the development of this country. 
Um, it is the party that brought private um, uh, enterprise uh, in this country, which has become the engine of uh, economic growth in our country. It, it's a party that rests on, 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 on real policies that are as valid today as they were in 1991. So it can't expire. The issue of freedom of expression so that we can excel can't expire because we mismanaged ourselves maybe in 2011 that we lost the election. So I do not agree with him. I think coming back, uh, there are two things that the Zambians will be assured of. Number one, when MMD comes back, they'll be assured of, firstly, of the truthfulness and the honesty in terms of the programs that we were uh, uh, undertaking in all sectors, in agriculture, as I've already touched it. We decided that our agricultural sector was going to be heavy on the, the small-scale farmers. We needed to ensure that we empower them with the inputs that they need in order for them to participate in the economy and feeding their own families and having some excess in order to look after their children and also take care of their own business. So government worked with the small-scale farmers who are actually the ones who feed the nation. Mm. And we made sure that food security was an issue. And coming back to government, we are going to ensure that food security is number one. And that means because of our continued commitment to agriculture, to make sure that the inputs are accessible to our farmers, accessible at the right time, at the right time of the season, so that they can, they can, they can plant their seed at the right time. That will translate in ensuring that, in fact, when we get back, one of the things we're going to do is we are going to bring back the subsidy that has been removed in order for us to reduce the cost of the inputs mm -hmm. and to reduce the cost of millimule, for instance, so that the people can start to, we start to win them slowly from uh, the subsidy. You can't just cut the subsidy and say from now on, the baby is two weeks old, you just remove the, from the breast and say, now take care of yourself. The baby will die. And that's what PF did. They came on the scene, removed all the subsidies, at fertilizer moved from 50 to 100. Medium you moved from 36 kwacha under MMD, and it went all the way up to 80 kwacha. But the salaries of the civil servants have been frozen. How do you do economics like that? You freeze the salaries of the civil servants. They are still at the MMD level, but everything has doubled and tripled, and expect people to survive? What kind of economics is that? So we are saying going back into government, we'll make sure that the agricultural sector is revived. We left government having three consecutive bumper harvests. Mm. And it's because we had a clear policy on how we wanted to, um, uh, to, to work with the farmers and ensure that they, we encourage them to produce every year by the incentives that we gave to them. Mm. And that will continue. Mm. We also did something in terms of job creation, mm. and which is something we're going to do even more when we come back. The big, one of the biggest problems we have in the country, the youth population is growing very fast. But there are no jobs. What are we going to do with these youths that are roaming the streets? They are a danger. Soon they, that can explode. It becomes a responsibility of government to ensure that the job issue is looked into and the people strolling the streets of Lusaka, not all of them are uneducated. Some of them are university students, but they have no jobs. So how did MMD deal with this? Through the good policies mm -hmm. and good politics, MMD created an atmosphere which is friendly to investment, that investors from across the world wanted to travel to Zambia to come and make an investment because of the stability of the government because of the freedoms that people had and because of the free um, enterprise that was being exercised by the MMD and the fact that an investor could come and invest in this country and externalize his, 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 uh, his profits without any difficulty mm -hmm. so that he gets what belongs to him when he needs it. But during the time he's here, he provides, uh, he provides job opportunities for our people. And secondly, he pays his taxes to government, improving uh, the lot of our economy. So we will go back to ensuring that atmosphere of investment is sustained. Mm. You must is understand. Is it not sustained at the moment? No. I'll tell you why. The 
international relations of Zambia right now is at its weakest. What are the indicators? The indicators are that if investment is going to increase, you're going to see that there's going to be an excitement of the international community, especially at the very highest level of the heads of state coming to visit Zambia. Because when heads of state come to visit your country, they come along with the cameras. They come along with their businessmen. They come along with all those people that are looking for opportunities to invest. We have not had in three years any high profile state visit. We have had state visits from the vice president of a country, uh, a prime minister or former president. We had a former president from Mozambique, President Chisano was given a state visit. Um, we are not having presidents. So that is costing us bad politics translate into bad economics because we are not attracting anyone. So what is happening, even the current investors we have, they are failing to reinvest in our economy because they are waiting for the scenario to change. And this is costing us jobs. This is making our children get on the, uh, uh, on the streets without jobs. MMD, back in government, will ensure that what we are known for, of good international relations. I was in the diplomatic world you know, uh, prior to 2011 in Canada, and I presided over one of the biggest investments in this country, the purchase of the Lumwana mine by Barry God. It, it cost them eight billion US dollars. Now that was the largest investment on the whole continent of Africa in 10 years. Mm. Why did they take such a risk from Canada to come and invest that kind of money? They were comfortable mm. with the statements coming from State House, the statements coming from our government, which are user friendly. There's some things I just don't know. Mm. Barry God had to transfer some of its investments from Chile in Southern America to in preference for Zambia, that investment that came to Zambia, they had to transfer some of their uh, investment in Chile in order to bring it to Zambia. That shows you how they preferred our country because of the policies that we had. So these policies mean a whole lot mm -hmm. to the international community and it also spirals mm -hmm. into job creation, which we are concerned about once we come back into government, mm -hmm. that people must have their jobs and that workers must bargain freely for better pay, not to freeze their money like they are frozen it right now. Workers must be free to bargain. It's, the, it's their right according to ILO regulations. Mm. It's actually illegal to freeze salaries of workers. It's illegal. And if they sued government, the workers would win that case. Mm. All right. Mr. President, even as we come to the end of the program, I, I think <clears throat> we've got a pending by-elections. Your view of the, the, the coming by-elections, where do you pit yourself as, as, as MMD? As I said in the beginning, we take every election, every by-election, as it comes as seriously as we can. We are very uh, committed to making sure that we produce the results that our people are looking for. Um, we are very strong in a lot of these areas in which we are participating. And we believe that uh, with the hard work that is being put in, that by the day when these announcements are going to be made, MMD is going to take a number of those seats. Um, I think that uh, we are doing very well in, in most of those constituencies. Uh, I'm joining the teams uh, later this weekend uh, to beef up the support there that they need. Uh, we are in Kasenengwa where we're doing very well on the ground. Uh, in Vubui we are doing well on the ground. We have uh, Solwezi uh, where we are doing well on the ground. Uh, I'm going to Zambezi where we are putting up a spirited fight. Uh, that seat was held by UPND, but we are going there to, make, to put up a spirited fight. Mm. And uh, we are putting up another spirited fight in Mokushi South, because that was our seat. So I think that um, uh, the plan on the ground is a plan that is workable, and uh, we have uh, communicated with all our members on the National Executive Committee and our members of Parliament that they're expected to participate fully in these by-elections. Because what happens sometimes is that you have people, like you said, who come to the party. Mm. Mm. The, instead of going to campaign with everybody, mm. they sit and watching and making phone calls. So, Finisha Nyuko, Benda Bwanji, Uko, 
we do not need armchair inspectors. And these are neck, could be some neck members or some MPs who have not availed themselves. And we have now communicated to everybody that we need everybody. We need boots on the ground in order for us to see the results we want. If we want to win these elections, all of us have got to put the boots on the ground. Not one person. Elections cannot be won by a president alone mm. or him with the elections chairman. Mm. It's everybody. Mm. And so if there are two people campaigning from the neck, you probably lose that election. Mm. And then they'll say, oh, it's the president who has lost. But where were you when the campaign was being made? Mm. If you had been there, probably you could have saved that, that seat. Mm. So I think that there's a good understanding amongst all of us that it's not just the support by word, it's everybody getting involved. And all Zambians, mm. instead of them just watching to see, no, we see contribute to democracy. MMD is not a party that came on the scene with businesses. Mm. It's a party for people. It's a movement for the ordinary people. Mm. And we're saying, if you really want to see democracy stand, come to our offices. Mm. Make your donation. If you can't come with us to help us, make a donation. We send some people there. Because it is important that everybody feels a part of this democracy. Mm. And I think that it is important for us to let the Zambian people know that this is their party, it is their movement, and we expect their participation in making sure that democracy is maintained in this country by ensuring that MMD is strong and continues to win elections. Mm. You've answered this question, <clears throat> but I will ask you again. And even as you answer this question, your concluding remarks can also follow. Uh, do you believe you're going to bounce back in power? I know you've already answered it, but I'm asking you this question for a purpose. You know, the problem with uh, some of you in the media is that somehow you have also started to believe the agendas of people that will say MMD will never come back into power. What do they base that claim on? Firstly, it's a wishful thinking. It's wishful thinking because they are praying that what they're thinking would come to pass. And if it comes to pass, then we have a better chance for us to continue to discourage uh, the members of MMD to tell them they will not come back. They are not, this is baseless. That statement is based on nothing. Number one, we have Malawi here that had a ruling party that was kicked out. Mm -hmm. Within a period of five years, they come back into government. So when they say there's no party that loses and comes back, where are they basing that? They base it on UNIP. UNIP, when they lost, they were wiped out. I think they only remained with uh, 25 seats. They were totally wiped out in 2011. PF only had 60 seats, MMD had 55 seats. It was not a landslide for PF. It was not a landslide for PF. It is a situation where we must clarify the fact that in many parts of the world, like Benin, for instance, the same thing that happened here, happened in Benin, kicked out the power, the government, in, I mean the party in power. Five years later, people said, no, 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 no. We are going back to the party that took care of agriculture, that made sure that we were paid on time. The party that took care of uh, uh, jobs, that is what MMD is. Mm. And in Benin, they came back. Ghana, it's a country where political parties, this one will govern, they'll throw it out, and they'll bring it back again. This concept in Zambia is being propagated by enemies and opponents of MMD. There's nothing on the table that shows that MMD will not bounce back. There's nothing. We've got the national character. We've got, we have fought the most vicious battles, and we are still here. And there's no battle ahead of us that we will not fight and win. Let the battles come. We shall fight them, and we shall win them. It, it's the resolve we have made to make sure that once, by the time I'm handing over this party to the next president, I want to look back and say, we have run a good race. We have finished our course. Now, you people, you can take it over. We have given you a party that is in a good shape. Mm. It would be changed. It would be refined. It would be beaten this way and this way so that it comes out stronger to face the new challenge of politics. Mm. So, yes, we will bounce back. We will bounce back because everything points to that. What about the temporal set setbacks, the by-elections where we lose? Mangango is not Zambia. Mangango is just a constituency out of 150 constituencies. You can even lose in 10 constituencies, even 15 constituencies, and still win. You lose in Mangango, you win in Munali, 
it's like you have won the whole northwestern province if you win Munali constituency alone. Mm. So I think these dynamics are there to determine the way forward. So we never get discouraged when you perform badly. Just like the PF never got discouraged in Mukaika. They continued fighting until they got their win. People say, no, whenever we lose as MMD, we should remove either the president or the National Zeti Committee. In Masaiti, which you cited as a seat we won, mm. we won that seat, um, followed by PF, followed by P uh, FDD, followed by UPND. But that doesn't mean the UPND must resign, the president must be removed because they came forth. Mm. No, these dynamics will be changing in different regions at different times. And we should just be focused to sell our message, not through violence, which has become the norm now. Sell our agendas intelligently by intelligent debate, mm. not violence. Because violence is a show that you have failed to think. Violence is a show that you have failed to articulate what you stand for. Mm. So you want to use might to convince. And I think MMD under my leadership has demonstrated that we do not want violence to guide us. So mm. I think that we are well on our way. We have fought the biggest battles. Uh, our party has stabilized and continues to stabilize, which becomes a good position for it to attract support. Uh, because nobody wants to support uh, a bank that is unstable or put money in a bank that is unstable. But I think that MMD has stabilized itself and will continue uh, to work on the unity of the party so that the confidence of the Zambian people could rise again mm. in this movement and we come back to government to provide the necessary uh, uh, elements of the economy that have been lost now by the patriotic front mm. Mr. and President, the your concluding system. remarks. My concluding remarks is firstly to thank you for inviting me to this program. To the Zambians, like we say, whippy men do for a night, by joy comes in the morning. There is no journey without setbacks. The greatest leaders of the world are those who face some of the greatest challenges of rebuke, whether it was David, whether it was Joseph, whether it was Daniel in the Bible. They faced near-death experiences and losses. That is not what determines what you're going to become. What determines what you're going to become as a party or as a nation is the ability to keep going with what you believe is right. And what we believe is right now is to improve the quality of life of Zambians, mm. to break the shackles that have been placed upon them by the PF, shackles so that the, we can speak freely, shackles that we can have investors come to this country freely, shackles that our Zambian people can get jobs, look after their families, and have affordable lives in their own country. I believe that through the New Hope message, Zambia shall be saved. Uh, Dr. President, Pastor, uh, which other one? Uh, no, 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 just... Just those three. Nevers Mumba. Dr. President, Pastor, Nevers Mumba, thank you so much for coming to the program. Really, we appreciate your presence here. Thank you so much, Karen. And to the viewers, thank you so much for spending these moments with you. I wish you God's blessings tonight. All right. To you, the viewers, thank you so much. Just like uh, Dr. Mumba had um, heaped the, some of the blame on the loss of the Mangango and other uh, by-elections which are taking place, we'd also like to heap the blame on ourselves for making this program not interactive. I think uh, this is due to circumstances beyond our control. But however, uh, we are working on these uh, measures to ensure that uh, this uh, program becomes very interactive as it is, has always been. These are measures we are trying to put in place, but sometimes technology will fail you. But we're doing everything possible to ensure that uh, technology is also uh, put in place so that we can make these uh, programs more interactive. But however, thanks so much to everyone that uh, took time or found time to join us on this uh, program. And of course, uh, to Dr. Mumba at the MMD, thank you so much also. This is where we've come to the end of the program. Make sure that you make a date with us again next week. On behalf of my colleagues around here, it's good night and God bless. Thanks very much. Yep.